Hello, welcome to the first ever episode of Talent Tutorials, brought to you by Team 5411 and 9105, Prosper Engineering, hopefully a third team coming soon as well. And here I am going to be showing you guys how to get started on WPI Lib, Java, GitHub, everything you need to get started on programming, and especially to follow along with the tutorials in this course. So starting off, what we're going to need is WPI Lib. WPI Lib is essentially a library uh, that allows us to make functions that we can use on our robot. It basically abstracts a lot of really complicated topics into a really easy to use format, you know, like PIDs, trapezoidal motion profiles, um, and things that get far more in depth, like Kalman filters and stuff like that. So first thing we want to do is down for w Windows, you want to press that. And if you're on Mac, you just switch to Mac, I actually don't know how to, I think you just have to be on the other platform. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can download it for Mac as well. And for Linux, it's a bit more complicated. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. But uh, if you guys want, I could also make a video on that maybe in the future by request. You also want to get GitHub Desktop. You want to download that. And you also want to download Java. Now, all of these links are going to be in the description. But I've already downloaded these, so I don't have to like do any extra editing. And uh, as you can see by the times on here, this is not my first take. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these are the three things that we're going to need. So let's first get WPI lib installed. I'm going to open this up and it's going to take a while for it to open. So I'm just going to skip to where I get there. Okay. So once this menu opens, you just press open. Don't worry about it. It is safe. It's by the Worcester Polytechnic Institute. So you should, you should be fine. And um, every FRS team has been using it. So yeah, same thing. They don't exactly have a certificate, which is why it's uh, giving all this. But yeah, you want to click run anyways. And here's the installer. Great. So we click start. We say everything. Uh, I'm going to do it for this user and down for this computer only. You guys don't really want to touch anything else because, um, yeah, we just only want to download it for this. We'll let that load press next and this is going to start downloading while I'm downloading this some command prompts may open up um just let it do its thing sometimes if you close it you might like intercept with it so just yeah just let it do its thing so yeah let's go back to downloads and uh this may slow my computer down drastically but um you know, let's also install github desktop now I am going to open this but while these two are downloading I'm going to show you, you guys want to go to github.com and you want to create a account on there. I'm going to have a more in-depth tutorial on what GitHub actually is and how to use it. Um, but it's, it's essentially for managing your code with big teams or even with small teams, even by yourself. I use GitHub by myself all the time. So you can sign up. It's really straightforward. You just need to look at email. You just need to verify. That's all. But, uh, yeah, I, I just want to show you, show you guys that. So GitHub desktop is really slow. Okay, like, or that may just be my computer, but um, it's going to take a while for it to open up. So I'm just going to fast forward to when it does open. So yeah, GitHub desktop opened up. Um, I pretty much just fast forwarded to this just to have another fast forward because it seems like this is going to take a while for it to open up as well. Oh, look, it made a desktop icon. Okay. Oh, finally, it's opened. You know, I could have graduated high school in that time. Like, that took... Uh, no, that's crazy. I don't even know how long it's been. Um, a couple of years, maybe a couple of minutes. I, I can't really tell at this point. So, yeah, let's just sign into GitHub. Um, oh, my God. I swear to God, if I see another one of those loading... Oh, never mind. No more editing for me. Okay. So... <laughs> Yeah, it should open up um this long URL, but uh, it'll it'll get you signed in. Oh no, maybe I have to do some editing. Oh yeah, as you can see, this is what I was talking about. 
while I'm installing WPI lib, um, it may open up a couple of command prompts. Uh, I'm gonna advise against downloading multiple things at the same time. I don't think it's a good idea, especially if your computer has like six cores or four cores, like how mine does. Yeah. You know, I should make the viewers sit through this so they can feel the same pain that I did when I had to install this. Okay, WPLib actually installed. Okay, faster than GitHub opened. You know what? I think I'm gonna close GitHub because, um, I, I don't think it's uh, yeah, I'm gonna close it for now. Okay, let's just finish WPLib. I, I don't know what it's doing, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna click finish. WP will open. Now, if you guys have your own Visual Studio codes, if you have a program called Visual Studio Code yourself, and you know what that is, because, you know, you have it, um, it's actually not going to conflict with your current install. But what WP Lib does, so now if I want to open it up, right, it opens up... Oh, I open up the wrong thing. I think I open up the documentation. Here, let me just use my desktop. But, yeah, it opens up... Visual Studio Code. Now, I never actually installed Visual Studio Code on this computer, but it installs its own version, and you know that with a little W in the top right, and with all your extensions and themes being gone. For people that don't know what VS Code is or Visual Studio Code, it's essentially a place where you write code. It's called an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, or Developer Environment. And uh, yeah, here you can choose color themes, but uh, I'm not going to do that on this computer. So, um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to get started on making your own robot later. This is just like how to install the programs. Yeah, so visual, so yeah, WPR Lib has been successfully installed. GitHub desktop, let me actually reopen that. I'm not really sure what was going on with it. Okay, sign into GitHub, yeah. So yeah, maybe not the best idea to, yeah, as you can see here at uh, Autofield because it just logged in with my own GitHub. Now, you guys want to make your own GitHubs because most likely you don't have it on this. Of course, you're logged in. But yeah, make the GitHub like how I said before. And uh, we'll finish. And here we go. I'm going to have another video on GitHub as well. Now, here. Okay, now let's tackle Java. Thank God Java is fast. Okay, its installation process is great. Um, yeah, I'm not going to change the destination folder. I'm going to pretend like I read this, and I'm just going to click install. And I think I have to do some editing. Not again. Okay. Oh, never Oh, never mind. Oh, wait. Okay, great. I don't have to do editing. You guys can wait like two seconds. Um, but yeah, so Java is essentially, if you don't know what it is, it's a programming language. And you actually don't need it to write robot code and put on your robot. But if you need to do like future development and such, Java is good to have. And, um, I don't know, it's just good to have in general, especially since you're dealing with Java, the language. And, uh, if what I said is new to you, like, what Java actually is, I highly, highly recommend you guys don't proceed with this tutor with these tutorials, and instead go learn Java yourself, using W3Schools or something like that, or Free Code Camp, whatever it may be. So yeah, Java successfully installed. Here, if I were you guys, I would restart my computer, but after this, I'm going to go to a nap, so I'm going to be starting it anyways. Um, <laughs> now, I'm going to show you guys um, how to get started with VS Code really quick, or uh, WPI Lib really quickly. So, we have this ripoff VS Code installed. Now, let's create a project. You don't want to click any of this. You don't want to clone a repository, none of that. What you want to do is Control shift p do you want to create a new project? I'm going to click that. So after you press uh, uh, create a new project, you want to press this template, Java, and here we're going to do command robot. We don't really mess with timed robot because it's not as powerful in the terms of management and like organization and structure. So yeah, command robot is usually where you want to aim for. And this entire tutorial, all these tutorials are going to be based on command robot. We're not going to have any timed robots. Um, base folder, I'm just going to put this in my desktop. I'm not going to create a new folder because this does that anyways. 
project name my test. If I want, I can create a new folder, but you know, I, I, I do want to create a new folder because I didn't make a new one, right? And here I'm going to put the first team on uh, on my uh, FRC, you know, uh, I guess club and uh, generate project. Mm -hmm. Whatever your radios are imaged to, uh, you want to set it to this. So if you have more than one team, you just want to double check. It's most likely the oldest team that's going to be uh, what you have to put in there. Uh, yes, I trust the authors because the authors are me. <laughs> so yeah, all the code is going to be here in Java, FRC robot, all of this, all of this outer stuff, you're not really going to worry about. We may talk about deploy a little bit later when we get to path planner and stuff like that. But for now, this is where all the code is going to be. You don't want to touch main.java. Um, what you want to mainly touch is robot.java, but more importantly, robot container, and then subsystems and commands. If I were you guys, just really quickly, read some of these comments. If you don't know what it means, that's okay. Um, I'm going to take you guys through this. But uh, yeah, while this project is getting made, you want to make sure it's, you know, configuring and all. Now, one last thing I want to do before I, you know, end it off here is show you guys how to, um, wait, what I want to show? All oh, right, I want to show how to get um third party libraries. API lib or third party APIs may be a better word. So essentially, WPI lib is a way that you can abstract code and make it easy to use. You may need third party vendors for like certain motors that we use. Like for example, for Neos, we're gonna need the rev library. For I don't know, let's say a Navix, we're gonna need the uh, Navix library, all of that, or API. So I'm just gonna show you guys really quickly. So I'm just, since WPI lib doesn't have the best search function on their website, I'm just gonna use Google. Uh, WPI lib vendor libraries. So you can tell this is not my first take because it's right there. Um, okay, so once this loads, uh, you wanna go here. And on here is going to have pretty much everything you need. If you're new to FRC, I highly recommend looking into what talent FXs are, what motor controllers you guys are using. Just talk to like a mentor or like a veteran that's been on your team. Did I click on it or is it just not response? Okay. So yeah, I'm actually just going to skim through all of this because it's pretty repetitive. Um, Let's say I want to get Phoenix, Phoenix libraries like ton of X's, pigeons and stuff like that. Copy, control C, right? Or you can right click and press copy like an old person. And uh, let's go back to, I can actually close this tab now. Let's go back here. We're gonna click on this icon or do control shift P and type WPI lib. And here we're gonna have ma manage vendor libraries. And here I'm gonna do install new libraries online, paste. Yes. So it installs uh, vendor libraries and it's going to install them here in vendor depths. You're not going to, you don't touch them, but yeah, if, if you want, um, you can just copy, paste and install from online and all that. And that's pretty much it. You just wait for it to build and you'll be able to use it in your code. Whew. I need to get some water because my mouth is dry. But um, yeah, that's the, that concludes the first episode of you know getting started with wpi lib frc java specifically uh, i really hope you guys can uh stay to look at a couple of other videos on how to actually get started programming what git is how to use um wpi lib and it's all of its simulate features so yeah i'll be super excited for that i hope you guys will too thank you for watching